Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Miguel Diaz. I am Senior Product Manager for Spotfire, and I am very glad to present you today what's new in Spotfire 12.5. We are very excited to tell you uh, about this new mainstream release, and we hope you are too. As usual, our confidentiality uh, disclaimer slide. Well, we consider Spotfire to be a full spectrum analytics platform. Spotfire is used across all analytics and BI use cases, and we bring one single experience for many use cases for self service data visualization, for carefully designed dashboards, for data preparation integrated with visual analytics, but also traditional reporting, such as uh, generating of PDF uh, reports. Data science with many built-in capabilities, but also tightly integrated with Python and R for customization, and analytic platforms, uh, analytic applications that are purpose-built, like this one for predictive uh, maintenance of equipment, and mobile BI for people on the go. And since Spotify 12, you can now act on insights directly from visualizations. Well, you know all that, but what about 12.5? Spotfire 12.5 brings uh, new features into data access, analytics data management, and data science, and the application administrations. This is uh, just a glimpse of what I will show you now. Let's start with data access. As uh, with previous releases, we continue adding more and more uh, OpenID Connect and OpenAuth use cases into Spotfire. Information services now support initiating open out flows uh, when needed to authenticate users to access and a specific external data source. And this is useful where, uh, for example, uh, Spotfire and the external data source use different identity providers, or uh, when using the same identity provider, for example, Azure AD, uh, but it does not allow scopes for different resources in the same access token requested through OIDC. So this, uh, I mean, extending the OAuth capabilities already introduced uh, uh, in this extending of, of some of the OAuth capabilities that we already introduced in Spotify 11.7 for information services. And where you can see here is that we have a single sign out to data sources sharing the same identity provider as the Spotify server. Continuing with the OIDC and OAuth use cases, where a user logs in with OpenID Connect or using an OAuth flow to authorize Spotify to access data sources, for example, information services or deep data retrieval connections, any reflex token is now persisted to be reused across sessions. And this means that the user does not get prompted to log in as much as before. On the My Account page here within the Spotify Web Administration pages, it is now also possible to view and manage all the active access and reverse tokens for better usability and troubleshooting. Good. In Information Designer, you can now create data sources where the end users must log in with their credentials, both to access data and to create a new information link. And to achieve this, uh, you can select here in the user authentication checkbox for data sources, and you do not input the username or password. And this allows for reusing a data source without having to expose any service account credentials. Previously, only the end user was prompted for credentials when opening an information link for the data source. But for using the data source in the information designer, the credentials had to be stored. So this simplifies. With this Spotify release, Users of the Tipco Cloud Spotify web client can uh, now simply select uh, 16 data connections in the Spotify library and use them as uh, a start for a new analysis. Data connections can also be used to add additional data to a 16 analysis files. Creating data connections and sharing them through the Spotify library is a great way to prepare sometimes uh, complex data models for the users. Business users can, with just a few clicks, use these existing models to connect to the data and immediately start visualizing it. Also, when using Tipco data visualization, 
you can now access the Boolean type uh, data with the connector. Okay, what about data management? Yeah, you can now view and manage data tables, the properties, uh, column properties, all from the data canvas in, in any client. And we have now a comprehensive view where as a user, you can reload or delete data tables in, in bulk and also uh, specific data, specific metadata for data tables and columns as custom properties applicable uh, throughout the analysis, uh, analysis uh, document inside expressions for calculated columns or custom expressions. For data science, uh, the new TIPCO Spotfire service for R enables the execution of data functions uh, using this open source R programming language. Analysis that are created in Spotfire Analyst can take uh, advantage uh, of R scripts and are available for Spotfire business author and business consumer users in the web client through the Spotfire service for R. Python-based data functions execution has been also significantly improved. We now have a much faster Python execution, uh, which uh, leads to more efficient workflows and improve uh, productivity. Uh, beyond that, uh, we have also enabled uh, run length encoding, uh, really compression, helping uh, further to improve the speed and efficiency of uh, Python code execution. Uh, as you may remember, we introduced a really compression for third service in Spotfire 11.7. What it does, uh, really compression, it, it works by reducing the size of the data sent over the network, which uh, reduces the network latency and improves the overall performance. Visual analytics. With Spotfire 12.5, we have introduced a library favorites, making it easier to find your most important library items. Library favorites is available, available in both the web client and the stall client. Uh, you can now mark individual items, for example, files, folders, information links, data connections, whatever, as a favorites in the Spotify library. And you can add and remove an item from as a favorite by clicking in the, in the star as usual uh, next to the item. Um, you can access the favorites uh, in the left panel, both uh, clients. And um, those uh, favorite items, uh, that list is private, only visible to the person that created it. The counter next to the favorite icon that shows the number of users that currently have that item as favorite, that one is visible for all the users that have access to the view uh, favorite counter license feature. This is a license uh, driven feature. And um, what it does, uh, this favorites counter, it enables a community driven promotion. You can now quickly identify the most liked items. Uh, the new markings panel enables uh, adding, editing, and removing markings both in the install client and the web client. And now you can also quickly see the number of visualizations using a specific uh, marking or limited by a specific marking with the ability to directly jump to a visualization. Markings in Spotfire, as you know, are a visual representation of user-selected data in visualizations, providing a powerful way to interact with and to explore data. Markings can be used to perform a variety of operations in Spotfire, such as uh, highlighting selected data points, filtering data, and linking multiple visualizations together. Spotfire now uses Skia as the default rendering engine for web player and automation services. Skia is a modern graphics library that provides advantages in terms of uh, performance and cross-platform compatibility, making it easier to have a, a consistent experience across different devices and operating systems. The transition to Skia has been uh, thoroughly tested and validated to ensure that uh, there will be no adverse effects on the system analysis, functionality, or user experience. As you may remember, we used uh, previously system drawing library from .NET. And nevertheless, client side and server side toggles are available to switch back to system drawing 
on the Spotify desktop and web clients running on Microsoft Windows operating systems in case you encounter any issues with Skia. Let's see analytic apps. Uh, when configuring data view parameters of a, an standard action, you will now see information about any existing row limits directly in the conf configure action uh, flyout. And when triggering an action, you will be prevented from running it if the number of rows are not within the specified row limit range. Additionally, an action that works on a marked data can be grayed out until some data is marked, guiding the user to trigger the action on the right context. And let's move on to administration. For better spot fire service communication and increased security, uh, content security policy, CSP, a response header is now set by default on most of the responses. Content security policy is a security feature that it is, it is used to specify the origin of content that is allowed to be loaded on a website or in a web application. It is another layer of security that helps to detect and mitigate certain types of attacks, including cross-site scripting and data injection attacks. Uh, these attacks are used for everything from data thief to site defacement to distribution of malware. malware. And CSP is a recommendation of the WC3, W3C Standards Organization Working Group uh, on web application security, and it is widely supported by most uh, of the modern web browsers. We have introduced it several improvements for increased uh, robustness and resilience for communication between the node manager and the Spotify servers, uh, such as uh, requests from the node manager to the Spotify server are now spread among the known online Spotify server instances. Uh, node manager Java OCSP, which means uh, online certificate status protocol, uh, those requests are now uh, using a local OCSP load balancing proxy, proxy and, and cache. HTTP cache control response headers have been added for OCSP and code trust responses in the server, and several other smaller improvements, like additional retries when needed in that communication. All these uh, change, uh, changes make the communication between the node manager and the Spotify server more robust, uh, when a Spotify server instance becomes unresponsive or when you uh, restart the, uh, some of them, or yeah. As you may know, a Spotify server uses uh, Apache Ignite for server cluster management. Uh, for increased Spotify server robustness, again, it is now possible also to configure the Apache Ignite cache replication among any number of Spotify server cluster instances. You can enable full replication to all of the Spotify server cluster instances or just to a customer number of instances. This is useful, again, for scenarios when Spotify server instances are often restarted or if there is a network communication issue in the cluster. Another improvement for Robustness is that uh, you can now configure a timeout for Ignite cache operations. You want to do that, for example, when the network is unstable or presents high latency. Uh, and in those occasions, some Ignite cache operations can stall or hang for some time. And for easier detection and diagnosis of such errors, we added a timeout for these operations. This way, you can detect it by looking just at the timeout error rate change in, in the logs. And also when that timeout occurs, the load balancer health URL will indicate the Spotify server instance, instance is unhealthy. Again, uh, with this same, within these uh, same environments that present sporadic network issues, or just when you need to detect failures earlier or for easier tuning, tuning of, the, of your system, you might want to enable, to be able to, to configure some timeouts up to Spotify 12.4, it was possible to configure the Ignite configuration set, failure, detection, timeout, and some other timeouts, or network operations for server nodes, but not for the network operations on the clients. 
and therefore for easier troubleshooting and tuning, we have added those configurable timeouts for the client failure detection operations. Yeah. And you see one that was available already in the server, but now we made it available in the in the node manager, is that you can use the Java opts environment variable to add additional custom GVM arguments to the node manager. This makes it easier to configure custom Java options for, for your, your Spotfire services. Memory management for Spotfire web player services on Linux has also been improved. There are several new configuration settings, a bunch of them for Tiger control and more fine tuning. This includes, for example, more control settings for the .NET garbage collector behavior for how quick and in which way uh, it's going to claim free memory to the system. Uh, the Spotify Server Installation and Administration Guide now includes more detailed information on the product license models and license information types. Uh, this, uh, this info was available before as a separate document. We believe that including more and more information as part of the main documentation provides more clarity and better visibility. So as you see, what is Spotfire 12.5? It provides you with quicker access to your favorite items in the library, enables the execution of data functions using the open source R programming language, leveraging the R data science ecosystem, simplifies authentication and authorization workflows for external data sources. And in addition has a numerous, uh, several uh, features or enhancements to provide increased speed, robustness, security uh, and troubleshooting of Spotify services. Spotify 12.5 is a mainstream release. We have a uh, new mainstream releases approximately every second month. Uh, mainstream releases are dedicated to customers who want to get the latest features and enhancements as quickly as possible. And if you are using uh, Spotify long-term support release, like uh, Spotify 11.4 or 12.0, so, I mean, those are still under support and they will be not affected. They will not be affected by this mainstream release. Anyhow, you may still find it interesting to hear about these uh, mainstream releases because it's uh, what will be available as part of the next uh, LTS release. And speaking about LTS releases, I also wanted to take the opportunity to tell you about the change, a change in our release planning. From now on, we plan to have LTS releases in September every year. This is a change from before it was from June. Uh, now we are targeting again to make an LTS release on September every year. Before I end, I want to make sure that you all are aware of the idea portal. I know you are, but uh, I, I wanted to repeat it. The idea portal allows you to share uh, your product ideas and enhancements requests directly with uh, our Spotfire product management team. And you can vote on ideas submitted by other users whenever you create or vote on an idea, you will get notified when the idea status changes. And the status uh, indicates when it's implemented or already seized, its plan is likely to implement future, future consideration and so on. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you very much. And I hope you like the capabilities that we added in Spotify 12.5. And uh, we hope to see you soon.